Hey guys, welcome back to Overhead Athletics. I'm Dr. Max Wardell. Today we're gonna to talk about four of the biggest throwing mechanics errors or throwing mechanical faults that I see in youth baseball players that come into my clinic either healthy and wanting to throw a little faster because they're plateaued out even though they're 10, 11 years old, or what leads to injury in guys. Unfortunately, that's what I see very often in clinical practice is 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds who unfortunately have sustained an injury as a result of poor throwing mechanics. We're gonna talk about four of those primary errors or major flaws I see in youth throwing mechanics in this video so that you can help to identify them a little bit better in your athletes. We'll talk about the four biggest mechanical errors that our youth throwers make. The reason I'm making this video is because we see a lot of mechanical inefficiencies in our youth throwers and sometimes we incorrectly diagnose these things. So I just wanna identify four of those for you guys so that we could be a little more accurate in our diagnosis of these and in our prescription then of throwing drills to work on these things. So we talk about the stride length a lot, we talk about different things, but let's talk about the throwing arm first because where the arm is in three-dimensional space can often dictate what else happens in the throw. And if my arm is in a poor position, that can lead to my body being in a poor position and me falling away from the target. Cover this in previous videos, but what we're looking for is that the elbow is about shoulder height. And in our youth throwers, we a lot of times see that that elbow drops way below the shoulder. What we're looking for is if I drew a line from left shoulder to right shoulder and continued that line across, that's where the elbow is. So that means if the athlete's tilted, I'm still at that level. If they're tilted a little bit this way, I'm still at that level. If they're tilted to the left and the elbow is shoulder height, but it's not really on that plane, it's too low. So a low elbow is a big problem. So we'll look at it and we'll see this a lot of times. Where that elbow stays down. I'll show you that one more time there. They take the ball out and the elbow's really low. And then what happens is they're climbing up against gravity the entire throw, and it leads to a pretty inefficient throw and decreased speed. But also, we've heard of little league elbow and little league shoulder. That's one of the big things we see in these athletes. So the elbow below the shoulder is number one here. Number two, with the throwing arm, once again, is the ball too far away from the center of rotation. We know our most elite throwers in the world get the ball in close to their head. Why? That allows them to spin faster, rotate at a higher speed towards the target, but also protect their shoulder and elbow. So when I got my doctorate degree, one of the things that I did was I took shoulders and elbows and jerked them around in different positions. When the ball gets farther away, meaning the elbow is more extended, becomes less stable. That less stable elbow position leads to things like UCL tears, strains of these muscles and tendons on the inside, and little league elbow or growth plate injury. So a lot of times what we see is the ball ends up too far out and around and the arm drags. Something like that, where the ball's really far out away from the body, sometimes the elbow's low, sometimes it's high, and the athlete looks like an iron mic trying to come through the throw. So that's number two there. An elongated lever arm of the ball way too far away from the center of rotation. And just for reference, here's Nolan Ryan. You can see he brings the ball in really close. One of the most powerful pitchers of all time through at a high velocity for years. And then we have some guys today. Look at Jacob deGrom. We've used this example before, but you go ahead and look at Corey Kluber. Look at Aroldis Chapman, any of these guys online. These are just a couple of clips. There's videos everywhere. So ball too far away big issue, but the, it's not when the ball is released, and it's sometimes not even here. It's really when that peak stress happens, when that arm starts to lay back. The next thing is stepping across the body. We hear a lot about stepping in the bucket, which is basically, if I'm throwing right at you, stepping way open. One of the things that we often observe is step across the body, more so than stepping open. So if we drew a line straight through the middle of the foot, a plumb line straight to the target, that line, we should be about, for our youth throwers, maybe two inches on either side of that line. For our guys that are about an average of six foot one in the literature, what we've seen with pros is that three inches on either side of that line is okay. Outside of three inches is too much. That's where we have an increase in shoulder stress and subsequently elbow stress. So two inches on either side of that line, that's not a lot of play. That's a four inch margin that we have to be on either side of that line to be in a good position. We can look at that. We just stand right behind the athlete. And I, and I like to do this before I give instruction to the athlete and I have them throw 
and I see if they're close to that line. If they're not close to that line, they're a step too far across their body or also too open, we know that's something that we might wanna work on with that particular athlete. After we've done a little bit of that, the next thing to consider is opening too early to the target. It's really tough to diagnose with our eyes. We see when it's happening, but we don't know how much or, or it's hard to measure. So one of the things we're looking at is when an athlete's foot touch touches the floor, that they're no more than 30 to 45 degrees open to the target. They shouldn't be all the way open to the target by the time their foot lands on the ground. Most of our current research in our pros shows that they're sometimes even completely facing away from the target with their chest perpendicular to the target. Their shoulders are pointed in a line with the target when their foot lands. That may not always be possible for our athletes depending on how they load their hip, but what we're looking for is to make sure they're not facing the target when their foot hits the ground. So if they're throwing and they're already here, they're way too open. 40 degrees open, maybe okay as they begin their throw. So 30 to 40 degrees open is about what they should be. So peers fully closed, closed from the target, 30, maybe 40 degrees about right here. Eyeball it, it's not gotta be perfect. We know if they're, if they're throwing and they do, and they're facing the target, they're losing speed, and they're in a bad position. This is the fourth big error we see in our youth athletes, and it often comes because their hips start to face open as soon as they lift their legs. So they lift, they lift their leg, they collapse open, and they throw. And they're in a bad position, and sometimes their elbow's in a low position as a result or other things. So what we'd like to see is that they're slightly closed away from the target as their foot contacts the floor. If you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to grow our subscribers because we want to get out to as many people as possible. We've talked about a lot of this stuff. It makes me happy to see that people are starting to implement these things. I get emails from people saying, hey, I used one of your drills. It's really helped my son. Or, hey, I've used your drill and now my arm doesn't hurt anymore. Those are great things for me to hear. I love hearing it. And if you have a story like that, drop it in the comment section below. I try to get to as many comments as I can, guys. We have a lot of videos and I'm doing my best to respond back to all of you guys when I can. So drop a comment down, subscribe to the channel, and I'm hoping to see you guys in the next video.